Hello, hello, hello. It's your boy, Mike. And of course, I got my boy, YS. This is the DM Podcast. In today's episode, we'll be talking about some injuries, talking about some people who come back. But our main focus on the podcast is talk about who we see making it to the playoffs. So we're going to go team by team of like find the, the, the last couple seeds to figure out who we believe is going to make the playoffs and you know what seating are they going to have. Before I start, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. And I always have to ask my boy YS, how's everything? You already know, every day above ground. Good. Always good to hear. Always good to hear. Now, um, the Laker game is going on right now. They were winning, and I don't think Anthony Davis finished the rest of the game. Because I know they were winning, and all of a sudden, that did not happen. So I don't know what happened. T-Wolves are a good team. They are. They are a really good team. Them winning is it's, for the Lakers seeding, it low key benefits them to have them win. I think Minnesota has an edge over Denver. So it actually works out for them a little bit in regards to uh in regards to seeding. But I think Anthony Davis got hurt. Yeah, he had an eye injury. I think it's the most random injury. Always. Always. It's AD. He's like glass. But he's the thing is. He's played like this season. Yes. Like he's played, did they say he's played more than like Kawhi, Paul George, all those guys? He's and Kawhi's been playing this season too. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. A lot of guys have been playing this season. So yeah. like, I'll I'll uh, I'll definitely give him that. But yeah, like luckily when I made uh, the rest of the schedule, um, I did put automatically that they lost this game. So when we talk about them, they're going to have the record that they are going to currently have in the next, like, 10 minutes after they officially lose the game. Yeah. So, but, yeah, the first thing I wanted to talk about was Julius Randle. You know, right after we kind of had our last pod, he got announced that he was going to be out for the regular season. The Knicks are kind of like your second, third team. How do you think the Knicks are going to do without uh, Julius Randle? Man, that's a big loss for them. I'm not going to lie. Going into the playoffs, right, because you can't really rely on Brunson only to isolate, right, in the playoffs. He's still an undersized guard, right? This is the playoffs. They're just going to put a bigger defender on him to slow him down because there's no worry about Randall, right? Other guys will step up, but unfortunately not ready for the lights like how Randall will be ready for the lights. You know what I mean? Like, And Randall hasn't even had a – he has – even Randall is kind of um, not the greatest in the playoffs, but he's more prepared yes. than everybody else. He's so. aggressive, right? Yeah. I know Randall's percentages are not the best. We know that in the regular season too, right? He's not the best shooter. He's not the best with shot selections, right? But he is aggressive. He will keep driving. He will keep taking shots, right? So, and Knicks... Who's it going to be? Vincenzo. Hart's been playing amazing this season. This is to me one of his best, his best season, right? Most triple doubles he's had in his career this season, right? right. So Hart's playing out of his mind this year. So we got to give it up to him. But they need Randall in the offs. You need your offensive guys in the offs because it's a slower game, right? Right. You can't rely on Brunson. He can only do so much. That's my team. Because a team is just gonna like put a big wing against him. Uh, potentially double him a lot more, and then you're going to force the DiVincenzos and the hearts of, of the world. And the crazy thing is OG, right? OG always said he wanted a bigger spotlight. Well, this is your bigger spotlight. Mind you, he's still kind of in and out of the lineup. He's not really, like, playing fully, but this is your spotlight now, OG. You got to play the second fiddle to a Jalen Brunson. How are you going to do? Because we need what? Well, how much points do you think they need of OG in the playoffs? For the Knicks to be competitive? Yeah, for at least to go to a seven-game season. Because I think they're going to face Orlando. They used to have 18 average. 18? 18, yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, 18 does. But he's averaging 16 now. Like, you're missing that 20-point score in, in Randall. And, like, Jalen Brunson has been going crazy, crazy. And Randall does more things like he attracts more attention on the defense right. than OG, obviously. Right. right. So, so 
So I think um, – and then Josh Hart, is he's going to have to score – and DiVincenzo, I think, is going to have to be – I think he's going to be more aggressive than OG. Yeah, I was about to say. Vincenzo has that little heater on him still, so he's ready to – he's ready to let it off still. Right. Hopefully, like, hopefully – well, we'll see what, what happens. But seeing season-ending surgery really sucks for the Knicks because I think this season – I don't think they believe that they're going to make it to, like, any finals. But, like, the East is, you know, we'll talk about Milwaukee. But, like, who's – besides Boston, New York had a chance. They had a chance to make some noise. So, I think, like, if your first round was against Orlando or Cleveland or whatever that, I think most of us would have picked the Knicks. Like, I think arguably if Randall was playing, um, and mind you, they still won games. I think an OG was healthy. This is probably the second best team in the East. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it's good that, like, they're tough out. If healthy, they're tough out. Yeah. And I think the, Thibodeau, he's always a tough out. Right. So I think, you know, even piggyback on what you're saying, no matter what, they're going to give a team like five, six games because they're going to be consistent and they're going to constantly compete. So, uh, but sucks for them, you know, overall with the Julius Randle being out. It really does suck for them. Uh, Joel Embiid is back. You know, we literally said after the pod as well, like, Embiid's probably going to come back and play. We were both discussing how much games he needs to play. Looks like he's going to play, like, you know, six games before the end of the season. Plus, they're also on a five-game winning streak. What does this mean for, like, the, the 76ers? How scary are they? Well, when Embiid back... Definitely brings that that monster back in the paint for the Sixers, right? Like that they desperately need. Because Max can't hold down by himself, you know what I mean? Tobias is Tobias. Yeah. So, and they're rolling into the offs too, right? They're rolling into the offs. So that's a good sign. But you know, Sixers, they're not they're not making it to the East Finals. They're not. I don't I, think. The one thing I, I noticed with Maxi is that like Maxi is um I don't know I, I've been kind of down on Maxi uh, recently but like I think he needs a Joel Embiid I I it's, it's funny because Embiid's been back because obviously it normally happens your efficiency gets better your shot selection gets better but I feel like it's got significantly better with Maxi so uh, to the point that I'm like oh like. He could be a number one scoring option as long as Embiid's on the same court as him, right? They, they they play a lot better. Like, today they took the Spurs to, like, double OT. I'm not sure if Embiid was playing today. Let me just uh, – Embiid wasn't playing today. He wasn't playing today, right? Playing today. Yeah, so – which makes this <laughs> – without Embiid, you're going to double overtime with the Spurs. With Embiid, you're competing against, oh, like – the heavyweights. So I think it's something that uh, I'm very curious. He had to a see. big game, though. By the way, he, he did. He did. So that's what's gonna make it um even better overall. But um, now let's get to the Bucks. They've lost three straight. On uh, the teams that the Bucks have lost to, darn near embarrassing. <clears throat> Bucks in their last 31 games. 15 wins and 16 losses. Exactly. With Dr. Rivers. And they were 30 and 13 with um Griffin. With AJ uh, Adrian Griffin. So in their last, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In their last 10, they are three and seven. They've won three games. So they're three and seven. And the wins are against Brooklyn, OKC, uh, which they have like a three-day lay. Uh, then they face, they beat Atlanta. But they've lost to – fine, lost to the Lakers, lost to the, to the Pelicans. Beat Atlanta. Okay, this is where it gets really ugly. You lost to the Washington Wizards. That's a that's not a good team. That's not – the Wizards aren't a good team. That's where Raptors, Raptors beating them today. Right? The, 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 the Grizzlies – you lost to the Grizzlies. So you lost to Washington, lost to the Grizzlies. Then you lose to the Toronto Raptors. And mind you, yes, the Toronto Raptors lost. There was no um, there was no, no uh, Giannis. 
And with the Memphis loss and the Wizards loss, there was no danger. But it doesn't matter. You have, we can both say Giannis is a top three player in the world. We can both confidently say that Dame is a top 15 player in the world. Definitely. This is a team that we should be believing in, right? They should be a good yeah. team. And you're losing to three out of the six worst teams in the league? Like the kids say, make it make sense. I want to, like, I can't say it's team chemistry because most of those guys have been together for a couple of years, right? Right. Obviously, minor changes, but they've been together. Right. It's just the coach is, in this year, different. But Ross is the same, right? Right. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, I, they don't have a switch. I'll tell you that. The Milwaukee Bucks do not have an on switch. So don't expect them to. We're gonna turn it on and off. So no, if they got it going. They got it going. If they don't, they don't. Lillard can get it going by himself, definitely. Be honest, but I feel there's no real chemistry there yet. Right? Is it too late to build that chemistry? Too late to build that chemistry in a, a ring? Yes. I, I don't believe they're winning the ring this year. They're not winning. Mm-hmm. Their last four games doesn't get any easier. Boston, which Boston's going to still play their players until the last two games. It's yeah. the last week of, uh, of the regular season. So Boston's still going to be healthy. So yeah. that's Boston that you have to face. Then you have to face Orlando, then OKC, and then Orlando. Well, they're facing Orlando the, twice. Orlando twice. And, and you know when you see the standards. Exactly my point. Exactly, you you said exactly. It, it's not like years past where you kind of like if you were third seed, you're kind of in third seed. Like no, no one's really kicking you off. Yeah. If Orlando, uh, let me look at the standings again. If Orlando, I believe they're they have a shot for second seed. They're a game back from second seed. Yes. Oh. Gotcha. Yes. So those two games are very important. Yes. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I didn't know that Orlando was like... That Orlando has a tough schedule. The second too. seed, depending if the Sixers drop or if Pacers drop, you could be playing the Pacers. Because they face Houston, which I think will be a win for Orlando. And then, the, yeah, then two out of the last three against Milwaukee, which... And then their middle one is against the, the 76ers. That could be a tough one. I will say that. And it's and it's all for seeding. Yep. I kind of like the way the end of the season's going. Because there's so much like fighting and jockeying for, for seeding. It's good. It, it's really good. So I'm very curious to see where Milwaukee lands because like you just said, like it, it, it's not like Milwaukee's path is, is easy. Right? Nope. It's not easy. So there's a chance they're not, you know, second place, and they're gonna go into the off season losing bare games, like so much. Yeah. Um, not rhythm, not a momentum. We'll see. What, what do you do to to the? Do you change this team in the off season, or do you kind of just say like, first season with Dame Giannis, it's normal that the first season doesn't go so well. We'll wait to the next one. What do you do? I'm going with your approach. I'm waiting till the next season, seeing how that goes in the next season. If anything, I just try to have some complimentary players, not no main pieces, trade main pieces, but add some complimentary players. See if we need more defense, more rebounding, whatever. You know what I mean? See what kind of – if we need a wing defender, for example. Like, just see what we need, right? And just add those glue guys slash role players. Nothing to do with the major core. We're getting rid of the trade. Just – Running with that and see how it goes this season, a full season with, unfortunately, Doc Rivers. Another full season with Doc Rivers and yeah, Lillard and see how that works. But it's not going to work. Doc Rivers, it's not going to work. So. I, I see. I think I know what your answer may be. And I know it, it's, it can be an early question. But if you don't make <laughs> it, if you don't make it to the, after the first round, if you don't make it, do you do something with Doc? Do you keep Doc? 
Let me say something. Already right now, I'm the GM. I'm looking at this guy's on the hot seat already. Yeah, right? Right now, you're on the hot seat already. Why are you under 500? Why are you not making it past the first round? And if you don't make it past the first round, he's, he's dump him. Just dump him. Please dump him. Because there's a, a potential, and we'll get to it. There's a potential if they stay at the second seed, they're going to have, even if they go third, there's teams, Indiana, Miami, or 76ers. You're facing one of those three teams. Yeah. And if you face them, them if you face Miami, you're done. <laughs> no one's picking. No one's picking you to win. Everyone's going to think Miami's going to win. Everyone knows Miami has your number. You have Lillard now in May. But everyone knows, you know, the record isn't that good, right? With Doc Rivers, yeah, they don't have chemistry. These guys have been the same guys in Miami. If you face the 76ers, which I would be so ironic because Doc just coached them, so it'd be very ironic if Doc faced them. The storyline, um, very much a storyline. So then I'm looking at like, okay, I think if Embiid is like. The MVP and B that we were seeing in the beginning of the season. I'm not sure Milwaukee's beating him this season. Unless Chris Middleton turns into like old Chris Middleton. Mm. You're asking for so much from, from like everybody. Sixers have more chemistry. Right? Yeah. Bucks have a better roster on right. paper. It just doesn't look pretty for the Bucks. Yeah. It doesn't. Like it looks like whatever path we're in, like. This They're hoping season. to face Indy. That's all I can say. They're hoping to face Indy. The thing, and Indy has their number. Indy's like three and one against them, four and one against them. So I think the, the playoffs are going to make a difference with the defense, especially. That's the thing, right? The uh, and the Pacers don't play no defense. So. Hell no. Scoring 140 against these guys. Yeah. That's sad. But I'm very curious to see what's going to happen with Milwaukee. Uh, but yeah, you may just. But I'm more curious about the coaching change. Because what's going to happen uh, there? i just very curious about all that. So something I didn't bring, I didn't put in our timeline to talk about today, but I wanted to get your opinion. I, I'm not sure if you've already made your you know, prediction for MVP yet. Not sure. Maybe we may do that in the next pod uh, because the end of the season. But Jokic is right now the front runner to be MVP, you know. But he gets a lot of, like, discourse because, mind you, his numbers are, like, identical to last year. Uh, Gilbert Arenas did bring up the fact that, you know, Jokic, one of the reasons why he not dislikes Jokic, but feels like Jokic is the worst MVP, uh, which is a weird statement to make. You're the worst, best player of the year. It doesn't make sense. Like, okay, someone has to be the worst of the best. So, um, which is an oxymoron. But, uh, but yeah, so, like, Jokic's records, he was, like, fifth place one year. He was, like, third place, fourth. But the way I see it, MVP is the person that I always think of. The person you take out, you take out that person, what is that team? That team, is that this team or that team? And I think if you take out Jokic, Denver is, like, fighting for a play-in without Jokic. I think if you take out Shea, okay, so he's not, okay, he's the worst team in the league. You take, yeah, you take shit of them, definitely, definitely on the mix. So, but I want to ask you, the discourse on Jokic, like the, the reason why people kind of hate on Jokic, I kind of have this strong take about it, but I want to see, what's your thought process? Why do people just honestly come across they dislike Jokic? The real reason is because he's treating basketball, I guess, like a nine to five. Like, he's like, uh, I play, yeah, sure. I play basketball, yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Like, he yeah. kind of treats it like other guys love the game, and you want to see that. That's what fans will see. He loves the game. He's dedicated to the game. Every chance he gets to work on his game, and he's watching film, and he's immersed in the game. Like Kobe, for example. For lack of words, he's just studying, watching. A student. Joker's like, okay, I'm playing ball. Okay, championship's done. Let me go back home. Let me, you know, breed horses, race horses, whatever. Like, that's his thing. He's thinking ball. And then after that, maybe in a timeout, he's thinking about being his horses, being back home. Right after the game, he's thinking back home. Right? Players after the game are thinking about how can I get better? What could we have done better? He's thinking about back home. So 
that's why a lot of people are looking at him like, like you, I feel is looking at him like, mm. right? I, I I agree. I think um he doesn't participate in the media side of NBA, and I don't think he, even though the media people love him, uh, maybe like some of the media people guys love him. I almost think like so. My take, and it could be a good take, could be a bad take. It could be like a weird take, but you just hear me out when I say, I think because Jokic is white and European, it's like they go against him, right? I think a lot of the black NBA players like don't like Jokic because he's he's not a part of the the clique, so to speak. Like, he doesn't act like that. He does act very, like, the European players, like, I come in, I'll laugh with everyone, I joke with everyone, but after I play ball, I'm going home. Yeah. Like, there's no nightlife for me. There's none of that stuff, right? Like, I don't, I, if I do it, it's once in a, a while. Y'all are James Harden going to, like, parties every other weekend. Like, that's just not what we do. Like, I'm not doing that. Like, they're a lot more family-oriented, raise the kids, da da da, da and, um, primarily black American athletes are not like that. They're a little bit more, you know, Blasty. right. Like you can bring a European player and they're like, say bringing an adult already, no matter if they're 19 or whatever. One of the reasons why Luca ex exceeded is because he was well mature before his ages, you know? Yeah. So, um, and, and I think it happens like that. I was like, like a guy who I feel like there's a lot of hate on is like Jason Tatum. Why? It's because he's kind of quiet. It looks like he just plays ball, goes home to deuce, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't participate in like he's not that entertaining, right? But Yoga just quite entertaining. But I just feel there's a little bit of hate because Yoga just being white. Like I truly do. I think if the man was black or not white, I think people would. I can see your take though. I can see that. Yeah, I think we wouldn't hate him as much. But I do think the media, when there is a white guy, oh, they push it. This may not be a topic today. Maybe we'll talk about it in the off season. Caitlin Clark, they had the highest rate. Shout out to South Carolina for winning a title. Shout the yo. They don't lose. They don't lose. They don't lose. Shout out to Don Staley. They uh, don't lose. They lose like once every two seasons. Yeah, they're they're a really good team. Uh, but Caitlin, Caitlin Clark really boosted, right? They they had the highest ratings they've ever had. Um, higher than MLB, higher than an NBA Finals game. Like they were killing it. Now part of me feels like you know, this is America, so we can just say these things. There's a great white player, and people tuned in. Yeah, definitely. People love Steph Curry and, you know, made him the hero and made LeBron the villain. Some of the things is, like, why they make Steph such a hero? The man's lighter than most, most NBA players. Closer to, closer to that complexion. So I, I, I just feel, and a lot of, like, I've heard a lot of uh, Black reporters comment on that that the love for Steph Curry was a little bit like anti-black love oh he's this he's so amazing he's so he's so this that our obviously we have Michael Jordan whatever whatever but Michael Jordan is famously known for saying Republicans like basketball shoes too right like he didn't fit he didn't he doesn't go against certain black stereotypes like he he doesn't fight for black people so to speak like LeBron has done yeah. That's why the NFL was never going to fight for any Black Lives Matter until Patrick Mahomes said something. The face. He, to say he, something. He, and you, need, like, you needed somebody to say something. Because if he didn't say nothing, trust me, the NFL is always quiet on everything. They would have been quiet on it. So I, I just think the discourse overall, to kind of for, circle back to Jokic, is that like, just a little weird, man. Just a little weird. The way people kind of dislike him and who are the people who dislike them, and then the people who like them, and who are the people who like them? So something I noticed. Well, he doesn't bring no drama, right? Like when the European players come over to the league, normally they're not flashy, they're not bringing no drama. There's not a bunch of girls, you know what I mean? It's just they just play ball, families want to get better. That's it, right? Like look at when Dirk was in the league. You didn't hear nothing about Dirk. I know. One of the strip clubs, and then he's just with his woman, worked on his game. Winner won won already. You know what I mean? Like that's what these. That's why, like, it, it's funny. All the players we kind of say like are potentially boring, are the ones like no one talk. Like Tim Duncan, 
doesn't get talked about. He'll be the most underrated player of all time because he doesn't get talked about at all, right? Everyone talks about the Kobe's, the Dwayne Wade's, the, the, even Carmelo. And I'm like, I was gonna say that that you took the words out of my mouth. Like they, people talk about more Carmelo than Duncan, and it's right. crazy. Right, and Duncan's like the best power forward of all time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Duncan was was that guy. No one, no one saw that, but I always thought it was kind of weird. But let's get to the main event, main event of this podcast. We're going to go through the teams that are fighting for playoff seating, play-in, whatever, whatever. Go through every game, predict a winner and loser. I have my trusted paper here that I'm going to go through. Uh, for the Eastern Conference, I went Cleveland, Indiana, 76ers, and Miami Heat. The other ones are kind of fighting. Then I went Suns, Sacramento, New Orleans, uh, LA, Lakers, and Golden State Warriors. They're fine. New Orleans had a big win today against the Suns, tying them up exact same record. So well, I don't know why when I look at the standings, it says the Suns are up. I'm looking at it right now. I don't know if he's up there, but it's 40. What, what do you see? 46, 32? Yeah, 46, 32. Yeah, it's just, it's, I wonder if they won the tiebreaker. If they have a tiebreaker. Would, but it looks like the Suns uh, have the tiebreaker. I don't know, because Pelicans won today, and I know you're in the West. You played the team, I believe, four times, and the East team once, right? No, no, it depends on division. Division you play four, okay. other conference three, and then outside two. Okay, yeah, yeah. It so. depends. Like, some conferences you play two, some, some you play three. Um, so, yeah. So, I would say... Do you want to go west first? It's the more compelling one. Or we go east so we can talk about the west a little longer. Yeah, yeah. Let's go east first. Let's go east first. Okay. So the Eastern Conference standings. Let's go standings first. Like we talked about, Boston's number one. That's not going nowhere. Mm-hmm. Boston's seating is definitely not going. Then we have Milwaukee, Orlando. Why is my standings not working? New York. And then... um. Cavs. Cavs. They're a half game between each other. Cavs had a big loss, like a game-winning loss to Paul George. Crazy. Crazy. Okay, so um, Cleveland is 46 and 33. Indiana is 45 and 34. That's the sixth seed. The seventh seed is the 76ers, the Legacy that have won five straight, 44 and 35. And the Heat are 43 and 35. I'm not. I don't care about um, Chicago and Atlanta. I don't believe any of them will make the playoffs, and nor should they. Like, yeah. Like yeah. I hope they don't. Like I hope there's no surprises. Like I hope. I hope Miami decides to show up and not give, you know, Demar Derozan and those guys a, a day to shine, or freaking Dejounte Murray and, and yeah. I don't want none of that. Okay, so no, I didn't know. I think no matter what, Boston, Milwaukee, Orlando, New York are in. Like, they're in the playoffs. No matter, I think it'd be hard for them to kind of drop down. Like New York would have to stumble really hard to, to drop down. So, we'll go Cleveland. They face Memphis first. Is that a win? That's a win. That's a win. Uh, Pacers. Mm, are they at home or against or away? Good question. Let's see. Looks like they're at Cleveland. That should be a win. Win for Cleveland? Yeah, that should be two straight for them there. Memphis. And their last game is against the Hornets. They should win those three. They should. Okay, so that's 49 and 33, you're saying. Yeah. So by also saying that, I got to cross off Indiana, I'd say that's a loss. Okay. So we're going to Indiana. They're 45 and 34. So against Toronto's their next game. That's a that's a win for Indiana. Well, Toronto has won two in a row, but and their highest this year was three in a row. And Darko gave them dinner, and then they just got sh- they went the back. 15 in a row. And their last one's against Indiana. Oh my okay. I mean, Toronto against Indiana's last game was against Atlanta. Oh, against Atlanta. Yeah. I think Atlanta may win that game. So you're going two losses for Indiana. 
Yeah. This is the last game of the regular season for Indiana. They may mm-hmm. need this one. Hawks so, are, I don't know. These guys, they'll win games here and there. That's the thing. So, wait, would you give them the win Toronto, lost Cleveland, lost Atlanta? Lost Toronto. No, win. To, are Indiana's going to lose to Toronto? No, Indiana's going to lose. No, Indiana's going to beat Toronto. Mm-hmm. Lose Maybe to lose Cleveland. the last game to Hawks. Okay, so that would give them 46 and 36. 76ers won five straight. Their next ones is Detroit, Orlando, and Brooklyn. It looks like they could go they could they could go eight straight. So I think so too. I think the Orlando one is where I'm a little bit touchy. Uh, it's not a back to back. I think maybe for Orlando it could be a back to back now that I think about it. Let me see actually. For Orlando. On uh, Wednesday. No, there's no back to backs for Orlando. Mm. There's no none for the rest of the season, no. They play the tomorrow, then they play Wednesday, Friday, and then Sunday. No, so their back to back is their back to back is Houston and Milwaukee. Because they, 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 they play Tuesday. Oh. Today's Monday. Well, t- technically, but that. Oh yes, twelve. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Twelve thirty-seven. Yes. So, sure. okay. so you yeah, think they're right. beating Orlando? They're beating Orlando. They're beating Orlando, and then of course they're be- they're beating Brooklyn. They're beating Brooklyn. Yeah. And the thing it's is, it's all like, yeah, if they need the seat because I think that last game when Beat's not playing. I don't think Beats facing Beats playing Detroit and Orlando, but he's not facing Brooklyn. He's not facing Brooklyn. They should win. They should beat Brooklyn without him beat. Regardless, right? Yeah. So that's 47 35. That that jumps them up. Um so the Heat then face Atlanta and Dallas in a back to back. They're getting the Atlanta game. The Dallas is, is shaky. I think Dallas may win that game. I agree. You know Dallas don't really play defense. Those two are just real dynamic. And then they face Toronto, and then Toronto. I think Miami, Miami kind of beats Toronto a lot in general. So you think both Toronto ones are wins? No. Yeah, I think Toronto gets one at least. I have to say, I think Toronto gets one. So, so that leaves them at uh, 45 and 37. So it looks like no matter what, we're predicting the Heat to be eighth. Indiana to be seven, Sixers to then jump up to sixth, and Cleveland to be fifth, fourth, whatever happens with Orlando. Looks like if we predict some Orlando losses, that means Cleveland will probably jump up. Um. So, so do you like that then? So we have Indiana and going into the play-in. So with the as the Heat and the Sixers and Cleveland making it to the playoffs. That's accurate. That's accurate. I'm a little, I won't lie, I'm a little worried about the Indiana one. I think they'll beat Toronto. That Cleveland one is a crucial one. It really is. Um, because if they beat Toronto and Cleveland, Indiana can rest because they'll be like 47. They can be 47, 35. Because no matter what, I think they may have a leg up on the 76ers. Ooh. So if they do, let me quickly look. Pacers. If they do, then they're then they okay, one and one. Then they are two and one. Yeah, so they're up on. So all Indiana has to do is win two more. But you're predicting two losses. That Atlanta one's gonna be so cru- uh, such a it crucial is. loss then. Yes, it is. Because that really puts them in the play in or not. I don't think they're gonna win the last. They're gonna win the rest of the game. So, Indy, I don't think so. Okay, now let's go. Seven to, in the last ten, but still. Let's go to the Western Conference. A little bit more fun. Hmm. So we have the Suns, who are forty six and thirty two. Pelicans forty six and thirty two. Sacramento forty five and thirty three. Um, Lakers forty five and thirty four. 
after today's loss and Golden State 43 and 35. Uh we'll go Suns first. They're facing the Clippers on a back to back. That's a loss. Both? Clippers back to back. I feel like history shows that it's, it's never two losses in a row. It's, exactly. it's like when we played 21, like the one person wins, the other person wins the next one. This always happens. So I would give them a one on one for this one. So go one and one. Then they face Sacramento, which is a very crucial game for them. Sacramento, um, they're kind of struggling the last. Ever since they lost Monk, they lost Herder. They're just not. Um, yeah, they're, they're, not they're dropping that game. They're dropping it. Yeah. Sacramento's losing, or uh, sorry, Suns are losing. Suns are winning Sacramento. So yes, we got we got a dub, a loss, and our last game is against Minnesota. Now the thing with that game is, is it's all about the seedings, right? If Minnesota can claim first place, Minnesota is going full team. If Minnesota is already locked up like a second seed, then they're gonna rest everyone. Yeah, I think that really matters. But let's so let's say full strength. The Suns or Minnesota? Mini. Mini, so that's a loss. So we're predicting two losses and two wins. So they're gonna be 48 and 34. Okay. Sacramento. So we picked a loss against the Suns already. OKC. That's a uh... OKC is kind of slider. Yeah, but I think I'm going to give it OKC a win. Because all they need the seeding, too. Which is true, because it's still tight. One game between first, second, third. Right. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still balling. They're still, they still have a, they're still a young team that can still play. So that's yeah. two. And then New Orleans. Which, mm -hmm. that would be a very fun game. Talk about New Orleans. That would be fun, but I feel like the Pelicans, you don't really know what you're going to get. Ah. I'll go to Pel I'll go to Pelicans. I'll go to I Pelicans. Agree. So that's three losses in a row. Then they face Portland, which I think would be a W. Has to be a W. So that leaves them 46, 36. That makes sense? 36. So that's 46 and 36. The Pelicans. So the Pelicans, we've already given them a win against Sacramento. Their first game is against Portland. That's a dub. That's a W. So that's two Ws. Then they face Golden State. I feel they're going to have an L there. L against Golden State. And then they face uh, the Lakers. Last game of the season. I feel that. If it's it's like back, a crucial game. This one's a seeding game for sure. He's back for seeding, and I'm going to go to Lakers. You go to Lakers? Yeah. So that's a loss. So then that leaves them at 48 and 34, the same record as the Suns. So now the Lakers Golden State, Memphis, New Orleans. So Golden State. I think that's a win for LA. Yeah. Uh, Grizzlies, that's a win for LA. Oh, we're, and then we're basically saying New Orleans is a win as well. So we're saying three wins in a row for the Lakers. Yeah. Wow. That could they just drop the game. So three is not too crazy. It's not too crazy because they just dropped today's game. Yeah. It's not too and, crazy. And LeBron didn't play and, and they have no back to back. So, and this is all winnable games. Very right? much so. So they're 48 and 34. Which would lead them as a tie with the Suns and the and the Pelicans, crazy. Now Golden State, um, LA. We said it's a loss. Yeah. They face Portland. That's a win. They face New Orleans, which I think we also said that's a win. And they face Utah, which is a win. But no matter what, they're forty six and thirty six. They would tie with Sacramento, which I think they beat already. So no matter what. That leaves the nine and ten matchup with as Sacramento doesn't really matter and Golden State. That's that's the nine ten matchup for the play in. Now, when it comes to now the other seeding, I I don't know because currently the Suns 
have it over the Pelicans. But I don't know what the Lakers record is against certain teams. Okay. Let's say the first the Pelicans. Or let's say Phoenix. Oh, wow. I think they have the win over Phoenix. It looks like it. They won the first two matches against Phoenix. They won the third one. And they lost the fourth one and the fifth one. But they're still three and two against them. But it played five times. Because of the because of the tournament. Okay. Okay. Right? They played I, I in the keep forgetting about that shit. Okay. Yeah. So Lakers are up three two on Phoenix. And the Pelicans. If we're saying they're gonna win, they're, that that's pretty much probably for the Let's see, let's see. Yeah, they're, they're one and two against the Lakers. Yeah, so this one's definitely for seeding. Whoever wins pretty much takes it. So if we're saying, oh, wow, there's a chance that LA may go to the sixth seed and it'll be the Suns and the Pelicans seventh and eighth. The Suns dropped a player. You know, crazy, right? That squad will not start in lineup. I don't believe in the Suns at all, anyways. They're trash to me. I don't believe in them. I feel bad for Sacramento that they have a chance to make it. They're going to make it to the play in and have to face Golden State. That's tough. Without Monk. Last year, like the beam, and they actually made the offs, beat that drought. So, but the injuries, man, the injuries, the injuries fuck up. Yeah, it did. If it didn't have injuries, it would have sucked. And look at the Pelicans, 48 and 34, and they're like eighth seed. And but I think no matter what, unless Golden State, unless like Steph and you know Dre and Clay have craziness on them, I don't see Golden State. I see Golden State also getting eliminated as well. I'll I'll give it to like the Lakers, the Suns, and the Pelicans. I feel bad for the the Kings. I really feel bad for them. Okay. So that's so that's that. So that's our that's who we think is gonna make it. I I should keep this to see how it all both both well. The only one that I'm a little worried about is that Indiana versus Atlanta. But if Indiana doesn't play like if they don't play Pascal and Halliburton, yeah, then I think it's gonna be an Atlanta win, right? I think Atlanta, even if they don't need it more, they they have guys who they're not a good team, right? So they're, they're gonna probably just win. It's one of those things that just. Yeah, the John played shooting 44 shots. Early hopefully, last. Week. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Hopefully it does not happen again. Man, this is the end of the regular, like the regular season, man. This season's been, uh, I think the end of the season has been one of the more exciting ones because you don't know who's going where. I love that part. I love that part. I love the playing, the playing factor. Like the playing factor makes it even more exciting. I'm not gonna lie, as fans. Because no one's sitting. Like, yeah. no one's just sitting to be like, oh, we have our first seed. Denver doesn't have first seed. OKC doesn't have first seed. Minnesota, none of them have first seed. Not first seed, yeah, yeah. So they all have to still play. I like that. I like that. Maybe the last game, day, uh, day of the season won't mean much for a lot of teams. Yeah, yeah, but, the last day. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's going to be a lot for those playing spots, for sure. Because they're all going against each other at the end of the season. So it has to mean something. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Anything else you want to chat about before we stop the pod? Just want these playoffs to start so we can have even more to talk about. Really. You know what I mean? That's really it. Right. So even for our pod uh, next, it may be more of an audio pod um, as we may be away. But it may be more of an audio pod. And with, the, with it being an audio pod, we may do like our our previews for like playing and and play because okay. the playoffs start on okay. I think the nineteenth or twentieth. Is so, it nineteenth? Yeah, the nineteenth or because the the play-ins are I believe Tuesday, Wednesday. It should be because end of the season is Sunday. So the playing has to be Tuesday, and then just sorry the first play the Tuesday. What's the Sunday? Fifteenth or fourteenth? Uh, fifteenth is a Monday. Okay, the 14th is right, so the season ends up 14th. They normally won't play the 14th. So I mean the, the Monday, they'll play the Tuesday. So Tuesday, Wednesday would be the like the seven, eight matchups. 
then oh, Wednesday would be the, yeah. yeah, Wednesday would be the nine ten matchups. Yeah. Or, or sorry, it would be like Tuesday Eastern Conference, Wednesday Western Conference. Then Thursday would be the Eastern Conference. Whoever won the seven eight matchup, or sorry, whoever won the uh, nine ten matchup, and the loser of seven and eight would be on Thursday, and then Friday would be the same thing for the Western Conference side. But they may play like a do a game one. But I remember one time they did this, and they said like a team waited a whole week before they played. But maybe because like the first seed, I don't know. I swear, no, no, yeah, that makes sense. Because on Tuesday, if you won, if you're the seventh seed, you may not play until the Saturday or the Sunday. Yeah, you do have five games to rest. But yeah, man, this end of the season is gonna be fun. Mm-hmm. Really, really fun. Um, so you know, shout out to the NBA, shout out to Adam Silver. Pretty fun time, pretty fun time to be an NBA fan. But make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you guys follow on all platforms. Uh, the podcast is going to keep growing, especially even the off season as well. And we'll talk again. Peace. Peace, 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 peace.